Welcome to Creative Writing. My name is Mr. Gibson. I am going to be your creative writing teacher and I am super pumped to teach this class. Uh, two years ago I graduated from Boise State University with an emphasis in creative writing and so I'm really excited to be able to share some of the techniques and styles and skills that I, I learned and hopefully I'll be able to pass those on to you. Um, I've been published in a few literary journals uh, for some work in uh, for my short stories and and some poems that I wrote. Um, and I'm currently writing, uh, or I guess in the midst of writing, uh, two novels. One is a humorous middle grade novel, the other one is a uh, fantasy young adult novel. So, all right. So some of the things we're gonna be covering this year are the three main styles of creative writing. There's fiction, poetry, and nonfiction. Now, like I said, I, I, I emphasized it at Boise State in creative writing and I went in there knowing that I loved nonfiction. I didn't know I wanted to emphasize in creative writing, but I went in there knowing that I loved writing essays. Um, many people don't associate uh, nonfiction or essays with creative writing, but it actually is, and we're going to talk about that later. But anyway, there came a time when I had to take a fiction writing class, meaning I had to write some short stories, and I was terrified at this because I had never actually other than, you know, middle school and maybe a little bit in high school, I never really had to write that much um, fiction. I never really had to write that many short stories. And so this was all a new experience. I knew that I was going in with these artsy people. You know, I was picturing them wearing their little berets and smoking their ca or smoking their cigarettes and drinking their cappuccino, you know. Um, and I was just, I was afraid. And I didn't want them to judge me and think, oh, I'm awful, you don't belong here. So I went in there and it was just this awesome experience. I had this very knowledgeable professor and uh, he just, the breadth of knowledge that he had was astounding. And he just created this atmosphere that was conducive to creative creativity. And uh, it was a wonderful workshop experience. And I went on from there um, really loving sh writing fiction and short stories. And so I'm going to share some of his techniques that he taught me and they're, they're really, really awesome. Um, but this week, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what I've been thinking about. The fact that appearance means everything. Now, we live in a society where this, you know, is, you're bombarded with you know, how your appearance is everything. You know, you got to wear the right clothes. You got to look this certain way. You got to have this kind of hairstyle, these kind of sneakers. It's crazy. And so, even though... I don't necessarily agree with it. At the same time, I can't help but acknowledge the fact that appearance does have a powerful impact on the impression that you make on other people. And so, I'd just like to talk about that and how we can relate that, that to writing. Um, before I start, let's just say it's the first day of class, English class. So you go to the class and you meet your new teacher, Mr. Efron. Wow. If you are a girl, you are dying right now, okay? If you're a guy, you're thinking, hey, that guy was on High School Musical. Yeah. But still, I mean, even if you didn't know, let's just pretend this guy, we don't know that he was in High School Musical, okay? Bear with me. He's a cool-looking guy, right? Um, so if you're a girl, you may be attracted to him. If you're a guy, you may think, yeah, he's kind of cool. He might be hip with it. Um... So you look at him and you automatically are okay with him leading this class and, and uh, you know, taking part in his lessons. You're okay with all of this. You think that whatever he says is probably accurate and true. And if you're a girl, you're probably thinking, it doesn't matter what he says, I will listen and do anything he says. He's amazingly hot, right? Anyway, wow. Um, but let's just say, on the other hand, you walk into your English class and you're greeted by this man. Different reaction, I'm sure. <sighs> Maybe the first thought is not, wow, he's so handsome. Maybe the first thought is, what bridge did he just come strolling from under? Because he looks like a troll. Right? How could this man know anything other than what this snot tastes like? He, he, he should not be teaching this class. How is he even let into the school? Different reactions, right? So out of these two picks, who's it going to be? Who would you choose for your English teacher? Hmm? Now, unless you're the class clown or, you know, uh, a, a joker or something like that, 
most people will pick the attractive person, right? Somebody like this, yeah. It doesn't matter if Zac Efron has a seventh grade education and English is his worst subject. Just because of the way he looks, most people would pick him over this guy to the right. It doesn't matter if this guy to the right is also the English scholar of the year, right? Because we just can't get past that face. We can't get past that face to access that English scholar mind. We just couldn't concentrate on anything he said. Ugh. So, like I said, how does this relate to writing? Well, when we write, we are showing the world, in a sense, what is in our mind. And that's why it's so important to learn the art, to learn the skill, the technique of writing effectively. It is an art. It is a skill. It is a talent. It is a technique. And many people just take it for granted. But how we write something really, truly, honestly affects the impression of, 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 uh, of what's on the inside of our minds. What we know, what we think, our imagination. So we're going to play a little game. Name the grade of that writer. Okay? So we're going to look at a piece of writing and you are going to tell me um, what grade this, this writer um, is in. Is this a third grader or an eighth grader? Dear Sport Illustrated, I think that athletes should get paid millions of dollars for many reasons. Here are some of them. The first reason is that they entertain many of people and they shouldn't play in front of many people for free. Second reason is that I'm a ball player and I'm, 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 I'm trying to get paid millions too. If they wasn't getting paid, there wouldn't be as many players trying to go pro. They are risking their self, so if they get ingered, injured, sorry, how could they pay for their insurance? That's not a question. I'm sorry. There's no question mark. Playing pro ball is like a job to a player. Who are they going to help their family? How are they going to help? Wow, I can't even read. Okay. Playing pro ball is like a job to a player. How are they going to help their family? Another reason why they should get paid millions, so they and I want to live lovely big house luxury. Hmm. So what's it going to be, third grader or eighth grader? Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, Mr. Gibson, you want us to think that this is it from a younger student, but really it's from the eighth grader. Well, yes and no. This was an 11th grader, okay? Now what does this writing tell you about this 11th grader? Some of you might think, oh, this, this person is, is not competent. This person is, is uh, stupid, some people might think. But I disagree. See, the problem here is not that he's stupid, is not that he's not competent. It's the fact that he has trouble communicating his mind, his thoughts, with um, his writing. Writing is a very difficult thing. For some, it comes easy. For others, it is very hard. And so this student right here obviously has difficulty expressing his thoughts through writing. He may do fine um, expressing them orally, you know, speaking. But when it comes to writing, many people have trouble doing this. It's, it's a very uh, tedious, it can be very technical talent and skill that some of us take for granted because we may find it easier. So this 11th grader is not stupid but because of the appearance of his writing, that is what many people will think. And so this year, I want you to remember something. What you write conveys who you are and what you know. It may not be fair or accurate, but that's the way it is. And so I hope that I will be able to help you hone some of these skills so that you can express your creativity, you can express your uh, imagination, your knowledge, your intelligence, and when it's appropriate, your professionalism. And so hopefully this year we can work together and come out of it as better writers, better communicators, better creative writers all together. So your assignment this week is to introduce yourself. Tell the class who you are, what makes you unique or different. Tell us about your family, your friends, your talents, your interests, um, what type of books you like to read, what types of writing you like to, to write, um, you know, anything. Tell us about yourself. Post your writing in the discussion board on Blackboard. 
um, all your writing assignments for creative writing will be posted on the discussion board so we can have a, a workshop community so we can help each other out so we can um, so we can critique and we can and learn from others. These are due this Friday, August 24th. Please let me know if you have any questions. My email address is sgibson at anothertwistcharter.org. Um, yeah, have fun with it. Just like this, the rest of this course. This is an opportunity just to have fun. It's not like your other courses. It's an elective course. I don't want it to feel like work. I want you to have fun with the writing process, but I want you to do the work. I want you to take part in the assignments and turn them in on time so that it can, we can all be benefited, we can all be edified. Um, but don't stress out about it. Just do it and don't stress, okay? All right. Have a great week, and we'll have a great year.